Hello there and welcome to this overview video on box modeling. So what does box modeling mean? Box modeling is basically the process of using a primitive such as a sphere or a cube and then modeling from that point with all the features that Blender offers you. So the term box modeling just excludes sculpting. This video is also part of the foundation for my asset creation tutorials as I don't want to repeat all the things that I will show you in this video again and again in all my asset creation videos. All right, so let's have a look at the basic options we need for box modeling in Blender. First of all, one of the most common used things is creating edge loops onto your mesh. Obviously, any step we will take right now will be done in edit mode as we directly change the mesh. You can create edge loops by hitting Ctrl and R and then moving your mouse over the axis that you want to loop. Edge looping is kind of like slicing something at that point, so you get an additional loop exactly at the position you specify, and from that point on you can then move or extrude all of the additional faces you created. Once you hit Ctrl R, you can also use the mouse wheel to change the number of edge loops you like to create, or use the numbers of the keyboard to have direct control of the amount of edge loops you'd like to create. Another very common and basic thing is to use the extrusion. For that purpose, you can just select either edges, vertices or faces, hit E and move them along the axis. You can also skip this axis if you right click right after hitting E and then move the face by itself. So basically you extrude the mesh from the point you've selected and that way you can add more geometry on top of the face that you've just selected. Another thing I'd like to show you is scaling around the origin. This is very useful to scale things independent from each other, so that not all the faces will move to the same center. For that purpose, you would just have to select the individual origins as the pivot point. This next thing is specifically useful for creating rounded edges, or arcways or anything you can think of that requires tilted geometry. To extrude something this way, you just need to select the vertice, edge or face you'd like to extrude and then hit Ctrl and left click to the point you'd like to extrude to. Important to keep in mind is that this is a projection from the camera angle, so you should always choose the correct angle when left clicking so that it doesn't distort at certain areas. The mirror modifier is probably one of the most used modifiers in Blender. I don't think it needs much of explanation, but I want to introduce it in this list as well as it's such an important aspect of modeling, because oftentimes this speeds up processes really by a lot, so there will certainly be occasions for us to use that modifier. Another common thing is to use the F key to fill in faces or edges. So this method is oftentimes used to retopologize some extrusions, for example, that don't seem to look good. So you can use this to recreate some extrusions by hand, basically. This next tool is something I only discovered recently, and it's basically the same as the fill tool. But with this tool, you can fill multiple uh, edges at the same time. So that way you can create bridges and have less of work by selecting all the edges one by one. So you just select the edges you want to fill, hit spacebar and search for bridge edge loops. And then you can just fill all those at the same time, given that they are opposing each other. To subdivide certain edges by hand, you can just select two vertices, hit W and then click subdivide. And this way you can create additional vertices in the middle of those two. But be very careful with this method, as this usually creates engines on the other sides. So this outer side has five vertices attached to it right now. And this can't be processed by, for example, X normal. So you need to triangulize that or fix this up by creating additional vertices to support this one. The last thing I'd like to show you is how you can realign some vertices or faces to a specific axis. So sometimes when you use this control left click method, you might encounter some deformations which you don't really like. So now we can use this method to realign all those vertices, faces or edges to the axis so that they make a straight face again. For that, we select all the faces we want to align, hit S, 
Then the axis we want to align it to. So for example, if we want to align it to the Z axis, we need to hit X on this specific case and then hit zero to all scale them to the zero point. And later we can move all of those back again to where they yeah, actually should be. So that's already it for the second overview video. I hope this was at least a little bit helpful, some new things you've learned. And again, this will be the foundation for the asset creation tutorials. So keep all those things in mind and it will be easier for you to follow my tutorials later. Thanks for watching.